sumasenso Manap ng trabaho O di kaya'y subukang magnegosyo Lumikha ng produkto At si Kaping lumago Inspirasyon mong pagkapi ko Katuwang ng gobyerno sa iyong tagumpay Iisang ating hangarin Huwag may abilidad at oportunidad Tiyak na ang lahat ay uunlad Trabaho, negosyo, kabuhayan Kaya natin yan Walang iwalan Kulang ng ko mga kaibigan Trabaho, negosyo, kabuhayan Kaya natin yan Sulok, Pilipinas Go, 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 kababayan Asenso'y sigurado sa hinaharap Manalig lang palagi sa sarili Trabaho, negosyo, kabuhayan Kaya natin yan Walang iwalan Kulang ng ko mga kaibigan Trabaho, negosyo, kabuhayan Kaya natin yan I love that song. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because it truly speaks to what these webinars are about. It touches on hope, encouragement, persistence, and resourcefulness. Hello, everyone. You're about to take part in an exciting segment of a series of webinars on Philippine agribusiness produced by Philippine trade and investment centers located across the United States. The centers are located in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and New York and they have teamed up to bring exciting and compelling news and information regarding Philippine agribusiness. Now, these webinars were produced under the Philippine Department of Trade and Investment Initiatives called TNK, and TNK stands for Trabajo, Negocio, and Ayan. And for those who are non-Tagalog speaking viewers, that means basically Trabajo means jobs, Negocio means business, and Kabuhayan means livelihood. Now, the title of this event is Learn How to Finance and Train for Your Agribusiness. My name is Ferdinand Soriano, Planet 63, your moderator and a strong proponent of the amazing potential of the Philippine agribusiness industry in the United States. Now, name any business or industry that you have that has challenges, right? And I'm almost sure that financing is top of that list. Today, you will learn how to develop an agribusiness as well as discover ways to acquire financing for an agribusiness in the Philippines. Now, today you will see and hear from an existing agriculture business that continues to thrive and is determined to succeed. He wants to share with all of you what he has been doing and encourage other people to do the same. Now, after that, you will hear two speakers <clears throat> that will focus on how the Philippine government is truly, truly committed in expanding its aid and helping uplift the Philippine agribusiness, as well as provide vital information on how the audience can invest, buy, and create opportunities for themselves in the, Philippine, in the world of Philippine agribusiness. Now, after all of the four speakers have spoken, we will open up the event for audience participation. We welcome your comments uh, at the question and answer section of our event, but we truly would like for you to go ahead and make comments in, in, you know, in whatever social media platform that you're using, or if you're currently on, on the, obviously on, the, on, on Zoom, go ahead and make those comments before the, even the, the question and answer section, okay? Now, please don't be shy. We really want your feedback. Now, without further ado, let us introduce the first of the four speakers of our program. And to deliver the keynote, I'd like to introduce now, well, he is the current assistant secretary that took over the helm of the Foreign Trade Service Corp of the Department of Trade and Industry earlier this month. Prior to this, he spent the last 20 years in various foreign postings in New York and San Francisco, USA, South Korea, Kuwait, and Taiwan. And before joining the government, 
Our uh, keynote speaker counts several years of uh, solid experience in accounting, banking, and finance. Without further ado, please, please welcome the Assistant Secretary, uh, Assistant Secretary Nicanor Bautista. Thank you, Freddie, and uh, good evening, good afternoon, and uh, good everyone. Uh, cheers from Rainy and Yumid Manila. I wish to thank uh, the DTI team in the US and all our partners, including the Department of Agriculture for organizing this webinar on agricultural entrepreneurship. Agripreneurship, in large part, directly responds to the basic need for food, a need so fundamental to human existence that it transcends culture creeds. But food is not only universal, it is also recession proof. As it is elsewhere, food production generates employment and promotes economic development even during times of crisis. In the Philippines, especially in the countryside where most of the country's agricultural activities take place, food production contributes to our government's work of eradicating poverty, uplifting living standards and promoting peace. This work takes on a more significant and urgent role today as the pandemic continues to wreak havoc in our country, disrupting food value chains globally and severely impacting our aspirations of ensuring food security for 108 million Filipinos. Domestic production of our basic food requirement is not only profitable, it is and should be our national lifeline during this time, especially this time, when traditional overseas sources are themselves impacted by a global pandemic of the kind that we are experiencing today. Going local does not only refer to buying local, it presupposes and presumes producing locally. Domestic production of our most basic food requirements insulates us from the vagaries of a global climate that has become not only unpredictable, but also hostile. Agripreneurship opportunities in the Philippines should be seen, therefore, in the context of a ready market for produce and processed food for over 100 million Filipinos. Just imagine targeting just 100% of that market, which is roughly one-tenth of 1%. 1 imagine selling a product for just 10 pesos to each of these 100,000 Filipinos once a month for a year. And that translates to roughly 12 million in gross income yearly. At today's US dollar peso exchange rate, that's around 240,000 gross per year. That should beat by a mile the speculative appreciation in the value of your most recent real estate acquisition. And then of course, there's the psychic bonus of generating employment, as well as the fulfillment of jumpstarting pockets of economic activities in the community where you choose to lo locate your agri-enterprise. Simplistic, maybe, but certainly true. I will close by inviting you to reach out to any of our DTI and or uh, DA officers in the United States if you have questions on how or where. I'm more than glad to assist you. Thank you again and mabuhay. You're on mute, Ferdy, I think you're on mute. There, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and There you deep. go, Assistant, Assistant Bautista, Secretary Bautista, a lot of the things that you said were amazing only, but at the same time, I know that there, there's a lot more that you can expand. There's so many things that in this seminar, in this webinar that we're about to do that people will, will be surprised and what uh, a small amount of money or effort can, can, be, can benefit from, I mean, can, that can be had. And, and we need to really bring that home in this uh, webinar. So let me go ahead and introduce the next speaker. Thank you so much for that, for the keynote, Assistant uh, Secretary Bautista. So let me go ahead and um, present, or the next presenter, basically what he's gonna do, he's, he's gonna present what's possible, what's possible in the Philippines and not just theory or nothing like that. He's gonna actually tell you what he's been doing how he's been thriving and how he's been successful. And he wants to basically share that all to, you know, with all of the people that are watching, because at the end of the day, we need proof that these things are happening and he can do that. 
So let me go ahead and give a little bit of background on our next speaker. He started his career as a computer system support and programmer in various software companies in the California internet boom in the mid, 19, uh, in the mid uh, 1990s. And in 2000, he founded a company called Care Advantage. And as a CEO, he ventured into recruiting nurses from the Philippines for hospital staffing and eventually becoming a consultant in the medical billing and outsourcing industry. Today, today, he is farming a 14-hectare Moringa plantation in the Locos Norte, started to introduce FDA-approved 500-milligram Moringa capsule during this pandemic. And his aim is to reach and develop more products aimed at improving overall health while improving environmental carbon footprint. So please listen carefully to what this, this uh, next speaker has to say because it all boils down to it, it can be done. So please welcome Jonathan Nolora of Aiden Moringa. Unmute, there you go. Let me just. Bear with me for a second here, play from start. Okay. I like, the, I like this, the effects on the background, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you. It's just you, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forgot. I have to share my screen first, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. Share screen. PowerPoint. Share. Great. Good All job. Right. Good job. Good job. Is that working now? Yes. Okay. Play from start. Sorry, guys. Okay. Well. All right. Can you see that? Yes. All right. Um, good morning from Ilocos Norte. Uh, magandang hapon po sa California or in the West Coast. Good evening in East Coast. I miss being in the United States. I was there for 20, 20 plus years. 20 plus years. So uh, I'm blessed to be able to present what I've been doing, how I got rooted na in Ilocos Norte because of what I'm doing. And I hope to be able to be, to bear fruits in what I'm doing at Sana Masarap, di ba? Um, anyway, so thank you, uh, Ferdinand, uh, uh, Nick, and Eric for the invite. Uh, very nice information I have, and I'd love to share this, and I need help. And I'm sure a lot of far I'm also speaking in behalf of other farmers who also wants to farm uh, and do the business in agriculture. But first, I'd like to uh, thank my sponsor, which is also me, uh, it's just 30 seconds. Daily dosages of antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, vitamins, and minerals will help fight COVID-19. Malungai sourced from E. Locos Norte, encapsulated in vegetable gelatins, is one of the best dietary supplements to boost our immune systems. According to the U.S. National Institute of Health study, at least 2,000 milligrams of antioxidant dietary supplements is required by an average working person. Take two capsules in the morning and two capsules in the evening of Ivan Moringa. All right. Daily. Oops. Thank you. Okay. So uh, Ivan Moringa, of course, we're an FDA uh, licensed company. Uh, we're, we're importing and exporting. Uh, we have a 500 milligram, which was certified only this year, uh, but they are available now in most of the local Norte pharmacies. Uh, and they're also sold in Taiwan. Uh, we also do other, uh, you know, products such as Moringa coffee. I try to extract uh, seed oil for skincare because antioxidants are really good in your skin. Other than that, of course, I'm, I'm working on my, my malungay noodles and different kinds of package packaging I can do with, with Moringa. So, uh, of course, this is a uh, two hour, I, I'm, I'm do, I, I present this one for two hours, but I'm gonna do it for 15 minutes for the sake of really the main topic is, is, is how to finance this business. But at least this should give you an idea of what you're trying to, uh, uh, finance for or what kind of business is trending. And of course, uh, I have to say, this is herbal supplements. There's no approved therapeutic claims in my packaging, and this is not a medical advice, right? But I have information. Uh, uh, 
from the Harvard edu education where they say accent antioxidants is a general term for any compound that can counter counteract unstable molecular mole molecules called free radicals that damage DNA, okay, cell membranes and other parts of the cell. Uh, we get this from you know excessive smoking too much work stress you know you, you get some cellular damages and so we get sick and we age and so that that's why we needed antioxidants antioxidants uh the way to measure antioxidants was uh uh, uh analyzed by the united nations uh, united states uh, national institute of health they call it the orac uh, method which was uh, devised in 1990, and they were able to find out how much antioxidant levels there are per 100 grams of each of these vegetables, uh, fruits and vegetables. And they came up with uh, analyzing the atomic level, the molecular structure of every fruit and vegetable. Just move this one here. And they found out that Moringa, Malungay, has 157,600 auric value. So in essence, it's it's uh, more than your average fruit and vegetables, like even matcha tea, your uh, acai fruit, your uh, avocado, who's only has 100, 1,900 uh, value, or, you know, your average fruits and vegetables. So it's amazing they, they started calling it the superfood just because it has so much of this nutrition. Uh, the U.S., also, National Institute of Health had an article where they found out that it is a potential uh, oral anti-cancer drug candidate just because of its uh, nutritional value. Uh, it's, it's, it's there. I, I try to research this before farming it, and I believe so, that it does have a potential. So I love it. Um, in fact, uh, Here's, an, here's another article from the National Institute of Health where they say it is potentially uh, therapeutic and preventive against COVID-19. Of course, it's just potential. They can use that word. But for me, um, I would just want to be healthy. I, I'd love to be able to feed myself with a lot of this because it is potentially. So therefore, they, they found out that, yeah, oh, wow. Uh, Moringa malungai has three times the potassium of your average banana. It has 25 uh, more iron than your average uh, spinach. So if you're anemic or something like that, you know, you, you want to have malungai to address your symptoms in low blood levels or high blood pressure. Uh, it has more vitamin A than your cast. All these things that they found out when they tried to measure, okay, the auric, the, the auric value of malungai, antioxidants. You know, antioxidants, your vitamins and minerals, A, B, C, D, all of this is your antioxidants. Uh, malungai farming in Ilocos Norte, uh, just specifically, I, I've chosen Ilocos Norte to farm malungai, uh, just because primarily here, and, and, and this is not to say you cannot farm it elsewhere, uh, but basically, you know, if, if you're if you have access to pili nuts, if you have access to cassava, you want to maximize on that. Uh, I think this topic is all about getting finance and being able to explore what you have in your farm. But for me, Ilocos Norte, just because, first of all, there's a lot of, of uh, malungay already in Ilocos Norte. Uh, there's uh, their age 10, 15, 20 years old, which you could extract the oil from because you know when you when you're basically when you're starting your farm you you won't have the the seeds and to be able to extract you know the seed oil from malungai you you have to harvest this from 10 um uh, age trees there uh, of malungai anyway so i'm just showing here that uh, I'm trying to hide from the pacific typhoons right because we get 20 20 of them a year so I wanted to protect my farm. I have to do it where it's not flooding. And, uh, you know, I, I, that's why I was trying to hide from the uh, Cordillera Mountains. Also in Locos Norte, of course, well not, this is not just for Locos Norte, but they, uh, they uh, passed the bill or something like that with the SBN 1400 last year, uh, enabling 100 million peso access uh, from the National Treasury. So I think this is what they're saying here is, uh, 
such funds as may be necessary for the continued implementation of this act shall be included in the annual. So annually, there's 100 million peso funds for what? Ex export promotion, uh, development, planning, research and development of Malungay specifically. And I think they they're wanted to do this with other you know, uh, superfood or essential foods that we have as well. But uh, to give you an idea, because uh, you need to know uh, some of the numbers. And of course, you can leave your comment, uh, type your name and address. Uh, you can contact me and I'll, I'll give you, you know, the whole two yard presentation of this one. But uh, I did my own kind of research and found out that this is maybe pretty much the average numbers that I could come up with. Uh, but like, for instance, in Ilocos Norte, when you're buying land, it's about uh, 60 to 100 per square meter. Uh, then, of course, that depends if you're near the irrigation or if you're near the road, which is accessible to, you know, your trucking. Or if you're way out far, maybe you're only, you're way out, out in the mountain, then your, 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 your land will probably be just 20, 30 pesos per square meter. Uh, good news is Moringa can thrive anywhere. Uh, it's just a matter of if, if you want to be harvesting on a regular consistency, then you want to have access to water uh, you know, and all those kind of uh, things that you need. I used 10 farmers when I was starting. Uh, over here, 350 to 500 pesos per, per day. And if you use 10, you, you spend about $2,000 a month. Uh, Plus, of course, when I started, you have to buy cuttings from the neighborhood. And, you know, this is extra income for them when, when you buy at least five pesos of a branch, a meter long. Uh, you know, and in one hectare, I do about 4,000 uh, trees per hectare just because I needed room in between. Uh, but you can do, you can double this up, of course. You can do 8,000 trees per cutting and, and it could be more harvest. It just depends how much space you have. Uh, I happen to have 14 hectares, so I want to start uh, a little spread out, then congregate too close to each other. And then, of course, you have, uh, you know, other expenses such as your, you know, your clearing, you want to uh, fence around your farm. Uh, eventually, you want to get your farm inspected for organic certification. So you want to make your farm beautiful. And I figured at an average per hectare, you'd probably be looking for $50,000 per hectare if, if you're buying or if you're owning the land. But if you have a partner or if you own the land, good. Uh, owning it is, is simply because, you know, you have access to like uh, loans and grants from land bank and, and stuff like that because you have a property. So they will support you with your farm. Uh, these days, the average per kilo of fresh leaves, right, when you harvest, it's just 10 pesos per kilo. Uh, if you have 4,000 per hectare, then that's 40,000 pesos per harvest. And again, if you're close to irrigation, if you water regularly, you can harvest three to four times a year. And this, in my case, I can do three times a year. So my 40,000 is actually 120,000 a year just on selling my fresh to someone in Manila who wants to sell the powder or wants to process them, something like that. So, and of course, locally, this is the price, right? But if you can dry it yourself and, and sell it a little bit, uh, you know, package this way, you can sell your malungay at 200 pesos a kilo. That's the average per kilo wholesale of malungay right now. And the way to do this is you go to the, you go to Lazada or Shopee or something like that. And you look for malungay powder, malungay powder. And you will find that the average per kilo uh, of malungay is about 300, 400 when they retail this, right? And online, that's cheap, 300, 400 kilo. But as a farm owner, you, you know, you can, you can sell your dried moringa for 200 pesos a kilo. Of course, four times when you export. So if you're, if, like, especially if, you're, if you live long enough in the United States or in Europe and you come home, you have land, you farm, you know someone, in the US, in Saudi or wherever, who probably needs Malunga, you can export. And it's four times more. Uh, basically, a lot of times you just, you know, try to get your uh, organic certification because these are the basic requirements when you're exporting. It is, if you're harvesting three times a year, it's a 480,000 peso uh, annual income for you. 
That's one point, I mean, 1.44 million income for you every season, about $28,000 a year, just exporting per hectare with 4,000 trees, right? So think about it, seed oil, you may not be able to get it, this from your farm, but if you know people in your area who have the seeds and you can harvest their seeds, it's 300 to 300 pesos a kilo of the seeds. And a liter, a liter of the seed oil because you're, you're buying it and, and then you pro, and you're extracting it is about 8,000 pesos per liter on the seed oil. So big money, big money. Capsules SRP in the Philippines, right? Just the, the average per capsule, they, they package this in 100, 30, 60, but the average per capsule is five peso. That's only 500 milligrams like I do. So a gram technically is, is 10 peso a gram. So if you're doing 4,000 uh, kilos per hectare per harvest and you just do a little bit of math you're, you're, and, and you, you're turning all your one hectare into powder, into capsule, that's a 6 million peso industry for you, 18 million per year, okay? So it's a lot of money, of course, if you can sell them, all of it per hectare and you're just you're just looking for someone who'd be able to use your farm as a, a exclusive exclusive source of their capsules like if you meet someone if you know you know someone in the herbal industry like gnc and they they contract you exclusively you're, you're looking at this amount all right, so there's more about, I, I can, again, if you need to know, know more about Moringa, I have so much information. They're doing a lot of products right now. Uh, it's not too late. This is just really firing up. I like the, the idea of having an energy bar because, you know, energy bar is so good right now with uh, the sports and, and, and being staying in healthy because you're getting weaker. Uh, energy bar, uh, you know, we, we can do that. So with that, I want to thank you for for the opportunity. Uh, I will uh, encourage you all to stay tuned and, and find out how you can get finance, get the consulting that you need from, you know, from DTI, the, like their page, comment, someone will reach out to you. And of course, I'm here to help all the time because I, I can't do this by myself. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ferdinand, Nick, and Eric. Jonathan, not Jonathan, I know that a lot of the information that you gave was very insightful and probably enticing to a lot of people. And the one thing that they have to realize is that the point of your attendance is just to show that it's being done. It can be done and hopefully people will, will do it. And, right. and, and it's our job to try to make it easy and it's more as a, sort of a, a way to be able to entice people to consider investing in the Philippines in this manner, okay? Now, thank you so much for that. And for all those interested in the numbers that Jonathan gave, uh, he's be more, he'd be more than willing to send out the PowerPoint on that. So if you missed that, you can replay the video again, or you can go ahead and ask Jonathan for that actual PowerPoint that he did. But before we go on to the next speaker, and again, thank you, Jonathan, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Congen Ed, Edgar Badajos and DCG Ambo Inciso of DCG LA and Congen Patrick Hilado of PCG Agana Guam. And I'd like for, you know, I'd like to thank you for your presence and supporting the, this event. But also uh, really quick, I just like to acknowledge some of the members and officers of uh, COFAC. It's a Philam chamber in, in California. It's uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Jerry Palon, uh, Femi Cupid, and also Ellen Sampson. There are more VIPs in the room. I'm trying to get my hands on the list of the workers there, but thank you for attending. Now, I would like to go ahead and uh, introduce the next speaker. She is here to talk about what the Philippine government is doing to empower as well as uplift the Philippine agribusiness. Let me go ahead and give you a little bit of background on who she is. She is the group head of the program monitoring and evaluation unit at the Small Business Corporation. She has over 30 years experience in credit, account management, relationship management, remedial management, branch operations, sales and marketing. Obviously she's done a lot of managing, so she knows her stuff. She managed, developed and implemented specialized lending, MSME credit parameters, consumer credit programs for sales channels and clients. For all those who attended this event, now you know what's possible. Let's figure out how to get to that point. And this next speaker will help us do that. Please welcome Linda Orsos. 
Good morning uh, from the Philippines. Magandang umaga and sa ating mga kababayan, magandang hapon or magandang gabi. Yeah, uh, this is Lynn Orsos from the Small Business Corporation. Uh, we are an attached agency of the Department of Trade and Industry and we cater, we are mandated to provide financing uh, facilities to our uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, let me say something about the HEROES program. Uh, this HEROES program was conceptualized or this was uh, introduced last year at the time that our uh, OFWs were being repatriated. So this is being offered specifically to our OFWs for them to start a business because we want to encourage them as pag uh, nila dito sa Pilipinas, they should be able to really have their own uh, means of livelihood. That's why HEROES program was uh, introduced. So next slide, please. Um, okay, what is HEROES program? Uh, this is a program uh, by the national government. As uh, earlier mentioned, uh, its purpose is really to assist our repatriated OFWs to really have um, a simple and yet sustainable business. Next, please. Okay, since this is a loan program, uh, there are um, new features na hindi natin makikita sa ibang mga programa that SP Corp is offering. So we call our OFWs as our kaheroes because we want them to really, um, we, we acknowledge their contribution to our economy. Silang ating bagong bayani. That's why this program talaga ginawa namin for them to be able to feel na talagang we, we truly acknowledge them. So the loan amount would range from 30,000 to 100,000. And considering that we, this is a startup program, we are giving a grace period up to 12 months. So once you're able to secure a loan or a financing, you have the option to avail of a grace period up to 12 months. Uh, though this is a loan, kahit po siya loan, we will not be charging any interest. So this is interest-free and we will not be requiring any collateral. So sa ating mga kaheroes, mga OFWs, this is one of the very, very few uh, facilities of SP Corp na ganito po yung kanyang nilalaman. Actually, this is the only program that we have in the agency na wala pong interest rate. Lahat po ng programa natin, we offer a uh, minimal interest rate, but, but for these heroes, wala po siya. And uh, later, uh, I will be showing you kung ano lang po yung fee that uh, this program uh, charges. Okay, next slide, please. Next, please. Okay, um, who can avail of this program? So this is being offered to our repatriated and returning OFWs. Actually, this was the first intention of the program dun sa mga repatriated lang, but we noticed that there are a number of OFWs who were already here when the pandemic uh, happened. So, uh, hindi either nandito sila prior to pandemic because nag, nag, ano sila, nag, nag spend ng Christmas or ng holidays with their family or natapos yung kontrata and they need to renew it. So, uh, we also would like to assist them by offering them this program for those na hindi na nakabalik. OFW po sila but they were not able to return to their ano po, work or hindi na sila nakapagkuha uh, ng new contract because of the pandemic. So this, this can be availed by our OFWs with the purpose of starting a new business. Okay, next please. Okay, uh, as earlier mentioned, uh, we don't charge any interest rate. But uh, once pong na-approve yung loan, we will be uh, charging a service fee, which is very minimal, and this is one time. So this will be deducted from your loan proceeds. And ito po yung mga corresponding fees. For a term of 6 to 12 months, we will be charging 4%. 18 to 24 months, 6% and 30 to 36 months, 7.5%. So you don't have to, to spend anything from your own pocket because this will be um, part of the ano, loan proceeds na deducted na po siya from the loan proceeds na ibibigay ng SB sa inyo. Other than this, wala na po kayong ibang uh, sasagutin ng mga expenses 
from availing this program. Next, please. So, uh, ano yung ating term in availing this program? So, we offer this from a minimum of um, six months up to 36 months. So, you can avail this program uh, up to um, three years. But uh, in terms of availing the grace period, please take note that uh, the 12 months na grace period na pwede nyo ma-avail can only be can only be uh, availed also once the term of the loan is uh, 24 months. So, ibig sabihin po, pag tinotal nyo yung repayment term na 24 months plus the 12 months na grace period, that would sum up to 36 months. So, napakalaking ano po yan, uh, privilege that you would be able to have because you will be given long period of time to really operate uh, at maging sustainable na po yung business ninyo before we will be requiring you to repay your obligation. So next, please. So how to apply for this program? We will be um, requesting you first to attend a one-day training which is being uh, done by PTTC, our sister agency. This is a one-day free online training with PTTC. And the purpose of this is actually the HEROES program has two components. First, we empower you. We would like to empower you with a training because uh, being an entrepreneur, I'm sure uh, as an OFW, iba po yung ating mindset. So we want to empower you by being new entrepreneurs sa ating pong uh, bansa. And with this one-day training, you'd be able to see lots of opportunities, lots of potentials, and your mind will be opened up kung paano talaga and kung talaga may passion po kayo in terms of doing a business. So this is a one-day training. Uh, uh, may link po dyan. We're giving you the link as to how you will register in this um, in this training. And uh, just to give you an information, next week, we will have the next batch of uh, trainees for PTTC. So if you want to join, actually, kahit po kayo nasa abroad, you can join this training. And once you will be going home na po, you can avail of this program. Kasi one of the requirements of heroes is that at the time you will be applying for the loan, andito po kayo sa Pilipinas na. Okay, next please. So after ano after completing the training so ang susunod is uh, magsasubmit na po kayo ng mga requirements for you to avail of this program. So uh, sasabihin niyo nako pagdating sa document requirements baka naman yan isang checklist isang buong page ng isang papel ang listahan. But uh, I'd like to to emphasize that for this program we would only be requiring this three Actually, uh, yung pang-apat yung training certificate number na yon na proof na kayo pa'y umaten. Just a scanned copy of your passport. You have to upload it. Na I'm sure naman meron po kayo yan. In the video presentation, which uh, you will be guided uh, once you attend the training sa PTTC, how to prepare. Kasi mahilig naman na tanga yung mag-selfie-selfie. So the purpose of this is for us to see you online. And at the same time, uh, we would like to see the business proposal of your of your ano uh, proposed business through this ano po uh, ABP and the business model canvas which is also an output of your training with PTTC that's it yun lang po yung requirements namin for you to access our heroes program next please so once you're done with all these documents, you can now um, proceed to the link of Heroes program by accessing this link uh, as being provided. So um, it's so, ano, uh, kung ako yung titingin, it's so convenient and kumbaga, very rare coming magbigay po ng ganitong uh, programa. So take advantage take advantage of these mga ka-heroes. And once you're able to access this, uh, we will get in touch with you so that you'll be able to be updated on the status of your loan application. Next, please. So just to give you an idea as to how many were able to access and avail of this program, well, uh, this data was uh, as of June 3, 2021, we were able to address the applications of, of more than 700 OFWs. And uh, in terms of uh, the spread of these uh, OFWs, uh, we have 108 from NCR, 
428 from Luzon, 89 from Vis Visayas, and 91 from uh, Mindanao. And I'd like to highlight also that there are a number of uh, businesses that are agri-related. So marami po tayo mga OFWs na nag-engage sa agri-related businesses. So uh, we would like to uh, emphasize that, that we are financing, we are really supporting yung pong mga ventures niyo pagdating sa mga agri-related. Like in Mindanao, meron sila mga sa seaweeds production. In Luzon, meron sila sa palay production, those that are into piggery, those that are into poultry. Uh, meron pa rin pong, uh, actually, with, with the presentation of Mr. Jonathan, baka meron pang magustong mag venture into Moringa. So we would be more than uh, happy to assist them. So yun po, qualified po sila. Basta po any form of economic activities except, may except lang ha, except those that are vice generating. We would be supporting all those uh, uh, startup businesses, even those that would like to engage in franchising. Kasi kung talagang wala pa po talaga silang ganong confidence to start their own business, they, others would acquire a simple franchise business po. And aside from uh, PTTC, we are also partnering with Coca-Cola through its OFW Rice program, which was launched in December uh, 2020. And right now also, we are working with another uh, trainer uh, provider, si yung group ni Dean Pax yung lead more development. So we are really expanding this to more OFWs for them to have a, ano po, a startup business na talagang kung pwede lang, they, they can stay here na with uh, a business na masisimulan po nila. Okay, next please. Okay, so uh, ito na po yung ano, uh, this is our hotlines and those who would like to get in touch with us, they can uh, call us and uh, I will be flashing later in the in the chat box the, the email address of SB Corp. So you can uh, access us and get in touch with us for more queries and later sa Q&A, kung may mga concerns po kayo, feel free to ask. Thank you so much and thank you, Sir Ferdy. Thank you. Linda, Linda, again, so far we're consistent with the we're consistent with the amount of information and the type of information and the way it's being presented. Uh, great job. Uh, one thing that I wanted to tell everybody, it's a no-brainer. One thing that I what I've observed is that with everything that's being promoted and, and being uh, disseminated here, technology definitely plays a big part. A lot of people in the past have probably wanted to take advantage of programs like this, but didn't know how to do it. But now that with technology, with the internet, you can do a lot of this application online. You can learn about it online. You don't have to go to a class somewhere physically to do it. So that's why to me, anybody who's watching this event right now, who's really interested in the Philippine agribusiness, it's almost like a no brainer. So to me, uh, if you're really interested in doing a lot of these things, uh, it's all online and you could take advantage of it and learn more about it. So, and also I think Linda is more than happy to send out the PowerPoint also, I'm assuming, right, Linda? Yes, yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Also, just replay the video. Anyway, moving on. Um, I'd like to continue uh, and expand on what you know the Philippine government is doing for the Philippine agribusiness industry to grow and thrive. And our next speaker is also about financing. So as you can see, the theme of it is that in the beginning, Jonathan showed you what's possible and what's doable and what's sustainable. So now we continue with how do we get that? How do we get to that point where we're building something like this? And how do we make it simple and show that the Philippine government is truly, truly committed and uplifting that industry? So without further ado, let me go ahead and, and introduce the next speaker. <clears throat> She's an economics graduate from Ateneo de Naga University and has a degree in MA economics from UP Diliman. She rose from the ranks, one of the pioneers of Agriculture Credit Policy Council, ACPC, since it was created in 1986. She was appointed executive director of ACPC in 2016. She was briefly seconded at the Senate of the Philippines as executive director of the Congressional Oversight Committee on Agriculture and Fishery from 2010 to 2013. She has more than 30 years of experience in rural development work, particularly on rural finance for small farmers and fisher folks 
focusing in policy research and program development. Needless to say, she knows what she's going to be talking about, and she's probably going to be awesome, which all of you will be definitely be impressed. So please welcome Dr. Jocelyn Alma uh, Bariola. Isang mapag mapagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat, saan man kayo naroroon. Uh, by the way, I'm not a doctor. I'm Director Bajola. My son That's what is I meant. <laughs> <laughs> My son is a newly minted doctor. Okay. Typo. <laughs> uh, first, let me thank the Philippine Trade and Investment Center in the Philippine Consulate in Los Angeles for giving me the opportunity to share with you the ACPC's Agri-Fishery Credit Programs for our small farmers and fisher folk and our agri-fishery-based micro and small enterprises. Next slide, please. The Department of Agriculture envisions a food secure and resilient Philippines with empowered and prosperous farmers and fisher folk. One of the identified strategies is the provision of easy, affordable, and timely credit. This is where our agency, the Agricultural Credit Policy Council or ACPC comes in. In order to help DA achieve its overarching goal, one of the functions of ACPC is to develop or design innovative financing programs that respond to the requirements of our farmers and fishers. We then partner with lending conduits such as government financial institutions and non-government financial institutions such as cooperative banks, rural banks, and cooperatives. The main task of our lending conduits is to evaluate and approve loan applications, disburse loans to eligible borrowers, and collect loan repayments. With that as a background, let me now present the Sure COVID-19 for Micro and Small Enterprises or MS MSEs. This program was developed in response to the difficulties brought by the pandemic in order to help agri-fishery-based MSEs recover from their losses, sustain their operations, and ensure the availability of food supply. MSEs can avail of loans for additional working capital. Borrowers may borrow up to uh, 10 million pesos at zero interest and payable up to five years. We, however, however, we charge a one-time service fee of 3.5%. Okay, so what are the eligibility requirements for micro and small enterprises? They must be registered with a government registering institution such as the CDA or DOLE. They must be operational for at least a year, have proven management capacity to implant, implement a project, and have readily av available agri-fishery products from farmers and fisher folk. On the other hand, here are the application requirements for micro and small enterprises. I probably don't have to, to mention uh, each item. You can see that from the slide. Okay. So now, um, next slide, please. Let me introduce to you one of our successful sure COVID-19 borrowers, Mr. Arnulfo Magcope the general manager of Ebon Multipurpose Cooperative in Aklan. According to GM Magcope, mobility was the biggest challenge during the enhanced community quarantine. He added that farming and fishing activities slowed down and many opportunities were lost for the cooperative. Thus, he was able to borrow 10 million from ACPC as additional working capital and has successfully sustained their operations amid the pandemic. Now let's proceed to the second program, which is the Capital Access for Young Agripreneurs or CAIA. This program targets the younger generation of Filipinos as future key players in ensuring affordability and availability of food supply. The eligible loan purpose is to finance the capital requirements of their startup or existing farm or fishery business. Under the program, our young agripreneurs may borrow uncollateralized loans up to 500,000 pesos at zero interest payable up to five years and a one-time service fee of 3.5%. Now, who are eligible to borrow under this program? Uh, we target those who are 18 to 30 years old 
and graduates of formal or non-formal schooling of any degree. Here are the basic documentary requirements for borrowers of Kaya. You can see that from the screen. Okay. So now, next slide, please. One of our successful Kaya borrower is Jelen Joy Bernardino from San Luis, Pampanga. Instead of working as sales lady in Metro Manila away from her family, she was able to borrow under the program to start her Mallard Duck business, which earns an average net profit of 1,000 pesos a day. Next slide. Finally, may I present the Agri Negocio or Anyo. Anyo offers zero interest loans to finance capital requirements of individuals, groups, OFWs, and micro and small enterprises that are engaged in agriculture and fishery projects. Next slide, please. The eligible loan purpose for the program is to finance the working capital requirements for all activities along the supply chain, such as production, processing, and distribution, and acquisition of machinery, equipment, and construction, and other facilities. For startup projects, MSEs can borrow up to 1 million pesos, while individuals can borrow up to 300,000 pesos. But for those with existing projects, MSEs may avail themselves of loans up to 15 million pesos. Loans under ANYO have no interest, payable up to five years, and a service fee, a one-time service fee of 3.5%. Okay, now under ANYO, we actually have a program for OFWs, actually repatriated OFWs. So we, uh, under this window, eligible borrowers may avail of up to 300,000 pesos, which has zero interest, no required collateral, and payable up to five years. Interested borrowers must be repatriated or unable to return to the country of employment due to COVID-19. They will have to be registered under the RSBSA and must be in the Philippines at the time of an application. So for those other OFWs who, or those Filipinos living abroad but are not re repatriated OFWs but just want to come home and stay here, come back to the Philippines and engage in our agri-fishery business, you are you may apply under our other programs that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, so ANYO for OFW's documentary requirements. These are the basic documentary requirements of the program. Only one government issued ID, proof of RSBSA registration, a simple business plan and letter of on, on intent, and OWA certification that you have been repatriated. Okay. Uh, let me introduce to you Mr. Kerwin Perez. He is a successful Anyo borrower. He is the owner of Exciting Traditions Processed Food Manufacturing, a salted egg business located in San Jose, Batangas. In 2020, they were forced to cease operations due to the ECQ. To cope with the loss in revenues, the company introduced a new product variant to the mass market. Ito po yung hygienically cured salted eggs with a shelf life of two, two, two and a half months, and they were successful. Kaya lang, they could not cope up with the demand because they could only produce 10% of the demand. So they turned to the program and, and they were able to borrow 2 million pesos to expand their operations. Today, they're able to provide or they're able to supply supermarkets and other outlets, including the Kadiwani Ani at Kita markets of the DA. Now we have an, another Anyo, but this is an OFW, no? repatriated. Uh, she, used, she used to be an operations executive in a trading and construction company for more than four years in Qatar, but unfortunately lost her job due to the pandemic. When she came home, she decided to engage in banana production using the loan from the program as working capital. Next slide, please. Now, uh, we recognize that our OFWs, young entrepreneurs, and startup business owners may need capacity building support in order to succeed in their business venture. So a support component to Kaya and Anyo, the ACPC engages state colleges and universities, 
government agencies such as the uh, Agricultural Training Institute and the DTI and Business Development Services to train and mentor our loan beneficiaries. Now, how can you apply under our programs? Due, next slide, please. Due to mobility restrictions brought about, by the, brought about by the pandemic, we launched the ACPC Access. This is an upgraded version of our online application portal for all current credit programs. Through the ACPC Access, the loan applicants can monitor the status of their application online. It has a self-assessment feature which links applicants to the loan program that is appropriate for his or her eligibility requirements. Um, it also has an appoint, appointment feature which allows the applicants to select preferred schedule for the online program briefing and business planning workshop. Through the said innovation, the applicants will also know which lending conduit, lending conduit shall he or she be endorsed to once complete documentary requirements were submitted. So if you're interested, please visit acpcaccess.ph. Next slide. So these are our contact details if you want to get, to get in touch with us. You may take a photo. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the presentation in behalf of ACPC. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. Thank you, uh, Director Badiola. Just like everybody else, I asked if you're going to be able to send that out also at, at uh, people's request, right? The PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Director Badiola. Eric, are we okay with the time? It's it's sort of like uh, it's 4.56. Did yes. you want to? Are, are we okay, Eric? Yeah, we'll just uh, proceed to the Q&A now. Okay, um, let's go ahead and open up the, you know, let's open up the event to the people that may have questions. So if, you're, if you have any questions regarding any of the topics that we just uh, opened up or any from the speakers, please go ahead and type it in um, in the chat box and we'll go ahead and do our best to go ahead and answer it. And uh, again, all of the speakers are currently on so they could answer it. So do we have anybody? I can't tell from my section if we have any, any questions. Do you have any questions, Wayne? Eric? Yeah, um, I think uh, I just, I'm, I'm curious, because uh, some of our Kababayans who may be interested in these programs would are, are still in stateside or still in the U.S. So um, would they be immediately excluded from this or are there other programs that they may um, avail of while they're still here and transitioning to the Philippines? Okay, I guess there's a, there's a question right there, right? Um, regarding ACPC financing. Did you read that already, Eric? Oh yeah, um, it says here regarding ACPC financing or the one with DTI, how long is the turn around time for the loan grants from the time of application? Uh, let me answer that. Uh, actually, when, when the documentary requirements have been submitted, complete submission of, I mean, submission of all the docu documentary requirements it would take a month, about a month, uh, to about four weeks to grant the loan. Uh, usually, the, the delay is caused by the applicants because they're not able to submit the requirements on time. Great. Thank you, Director Badiola. I uh, just wanted to acknowledge some comments from Ellen Sampson. Great, insightful meeting from Jonathan Patalvera. Great event. And also, we just want to make sure that you are fully aware that in the chat box, there is a questionnaire. This helps us out to figure out how to tailor the future events. So if you'd be so kind enough, all of it that's watching to go into that and fill out that survey, that would be great. Um, again, we also would like to acknowledge the presence of Consul Ferdinand Flores of Philippine Consulate General, um, SCR, JP Nigo, PTIC Guangzhou, as well as Merwin Montenegro, Philippine Chamber of Commerce, and also, um, Again, if you have any questions for any of the participants, do so now. And that last question is ACPC financing that was already answered. Um, if, if there's any question, I, what I would like to do just really quick 
is really encourage everyone to read a, an, an article in, in the internet. It's from the World Bank. And this should excite you in what's, capable, what's, what's possible in the Philippines. There was an article in September 9, 2020, and it basically it just says titled Transforming Philippine Agriculture During COVID-19 and Beyond. Basically, modernizing the country's agriculture is a very important agenda for the Philippines. And this is from the World Bank. So they're very bullish about what's happening in the Philippines in terms of, of the, the sector. So to me, if you want to be convinced beyond what we're doing here is I would, uh, I would suggest everybody to go to, to the internet, go uh, Google the World Bank and, and, and look at the title Transforming Philippine Agriculture During COVID-19. So uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knew that. Is, do we have any other questions, Eric? It looks like we don't have any more questions, Eric. Yeah, um, most likely the presentations are very informative and um, straight to the point. Um, but we would send um, all of the those participants here a copy of those presentations after this, and maybe for now, um, if if we can open our um, videos, if you can, um, so that we could take a group picture. Yeah, so everybody just uh, go ahead and open up your camera so we know exactly who actually he attended. Again, I want to, while we're doing all of that, just tell me, just, just disrupt me or interrupt me, okay, Eric, but I want to go ahead and just uh, acknowledge uh, everyone who uh, attended the speakers, okay? So first, I want to go ahead and uh, acknowledge the the trade commissioners and the consul commercial uh, from the different places, Ben Oy, um, Celine Layub, um, Nicanor Bautista, as well as um, Eric Elnar, of course, and Wang Simbula, PTIC Los Angeles. Did I miss anybody? Um, Raymond Batak, ooh, there you go. I don't wanna miss out Raymond, who, who got together and put all these series together. And while we're getting everybody, uh, please stay tuned for, for for future episodes or find, for other segments of these webinars. In the next webinar that, that it's being put together for next month, we'll be ringing to you live next month. It will delve into Philippine regional opportunities available in Visayas, Mindanao, and Luzon. So basically, if you're interested in agribusiness, uh, what that's gonna do is gonna be focused more on those pro in regional opportunities there. So you can really understand where you can invest your money or rather how, how, where you wanna start it. Right, Eric? Yes. Um, but could, uh, did someone already take a picture? Uh, yes, sir, I did. Okay, thanks. Now, um, there's a question that just came in. Is the ACPC program only available for OFWs? I think yeah, I would like to expand this to say, um, is it also available for maybe returning uh, Filipinos like uh, retirees? Yes, sir. Yes, it's available as long as you will be staying here in the Philippines because our conduits will not be granting loans if you're not physically present here. So maybe um, for our kababayas who are still based in the U.S., um, this program could be for your um, kamag-anas or your loved ones in the Philippines. Um, let them know about these programs. And yeah, I mean... Uh, there's another one here. Would love to promote this information to the chambers and the community. We want our families to learn how to fish, not just wait for the fish. Yeah. Thank I, you I, for that comment. I wanted to expand on that. Yeah, there, definitely. Yeah, because it's one thing to help the country be successful and, and also give to the country by sending money. But I, I think overall, just from my perspective, we, we need to figure out a way to make these type of investments sustainable. And agribusiness is all definitely sustainable. And hopefully people will continue to, to research it and, and, and understand that there's a lot of potential. So with that being said, Eric, uh, I know we're at the uh, 5 p.m. mark. Do you want to go ahead and continue? Um, yeah, I think if there are no um, other questions, uh, maybe you could uh, um, segue to the um, next event, uh, the fourth uh, part of this uh, webinar series. Yeah, again, as I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, it's a web. It's a series of webinars that's promoting agribusiness in the Philippines. So in the next one, as far as 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 I was told, next month there will be uh, what we call the regional opportunities. So we're talking about agribusinesses in um, uh, Visayas, uh, Mindanao, and Luzon. I think those are the three uh, regional opportunities. Correct, Eric? Yes. Okay. So now, again, th these things are put together because of the need to really fully understand what's what's at stake in terms of taking the opportunity. Uh, let's go ahead and continue to empower the, the Philippine farmers and the agribusiness as a whole in, in regards to that. So the only way you're going to continue to be engaged in it is to really understand. And I think uh, everyone from the PTIC group here in Los Angeles, I mean, uh, in, in the US have done a great job in trying to make it a no brainer for everybody who is interested and slightly interested to really understand how to go about doing that. And I think you guys did a great job. So are, are we gonna go ahead and um, sign off if, if there's any other questions? Yes, and please uh, don't forget to fill up the short survey form the link is uh, posted in the chat box. Just click on it and it would lead you to the survey form. It would help us you know, improve uh, our events and also um, provide us um, suggestions for our future topics. So again, thank you very much uh, everyone for joining us today. You, Eric. We... Again, uh, everyone, thank you. This is Ferdinand thank Soriano, Ferdinand. Planet 63. Uh, you're ever so grateful moderator. I love being a part of this because obviously it means to everyone uh, an opportunity. So have a great rest of the week, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for the good job and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you were able to make it. <laughs> yep.